Okay, my friends, welcome back to chapter two of Stumpy's Tale. We are going to be doing chapter two of Stumpy's Tale today. I don't know exactly what y'all want to see. I know you guys love Pac-Man frogs. I will try to uh, let you guys look at some awesome Pac-Man frogs. If I can set this up in some way where you guys can see. Let's see how this is gonna look while I read to you guys. I don't want my pipe from the man frog eating this. Ain't that cool? Yep, I don't know how good you can see that, but that is an albino four spot patternless pac man frog, people. see here what's going on out there you got visitors. well people for some reason I have visitors right when I'm gonna make a video but I'm not gonna cut this I will restart chapter two because I do live a busy life I got fans all over the world even in real life so stay tuned okay guys I am back and I want to bring you all the best experience possible during chapter two of Stumpy's Tale um, I had to go Step out for a minute because we had some locals that wanted to see some of my badassness. So I had to do that. So I will set you guys up on my possible hit for Skillis and possible hit for Albino Cane Break Rattlesnake while I read Chapter 2 of Stumpy's Tale. And y'all, be sure if you're tuning in to this Chapter 2. Make sure you go back and watch chapter one. You don't want to miss anything. All right, guys. Chapter two, working during Nancy. I first met Stumpy in the summer. The height of the wet season in the glades. Needless to say, we were a good team and soon had our act down pat. Well, almost. An alligator is controlled by the sun, moon, tide, rainfall and whatever else you might want to add in other words my gators work when and only when they choose but when he feels like it stumpy will come out and say hello now first of all stumpy doesn't swim he kind of waddles back and forth when i pulled my boat into the nesting area all the little gators of various sizes would come out first i called stumpy are you coming out or not? If I spotted him, I'd direct their attention to him, simultaneously throwing a bit of marshmallow. The little guy would waddle with all his might trying to get the marshmallow before his brothers and sisters did. Of course, to the people on the airboat, it looked as if he were responding to his name. He wasn't, but what people didn't know wouldn't hurt them. I have to interrupt him right there to say that I do believe that uh, alligators can respond to their own name. But this is his story, so I'm going to keep you guys on track. Anyway, when he arrived beside the boat, I ignored him. I began his life story while dropping dog food pellets for all the other gators. Stumpy waited with his head nestled next to the boat. He had a sad little look on his face. When I reached the part about how he wasn't going to make it, he'd kind of dip his head under the water so somebody would come to his defense. Give him a marshmallow. I'd oblige. Stumpy would dive, lose his balance, spin, go under, and then come back to the surface, marshmallow in tow. Everyone was happy. The people, Stumpy and I. I like this little guy. Now Stumpy and I had a great routine, but he got bored sometimes, and frankly, so did I. Things change a bit. Also, other things happen. When you've got that many gators about, for instance, if old Nancy happened to make an appearance, all eyes and interest were focused on her. People really want to see a big alligator. Well. This old girl was eight feet, weighed a couple hundred pounds, and only had one eye. 
when that is a foot and a half away from you, you tend to watch it closely. The old girl never showed much, never did much. She just looked tired. Well, with 50 to 60 kids still at home, she had the right. And of course, Jumper was there also. There were no marks to tell him from the rest, except the meanest looking eyes you've ever looked into. He made his mark on the world with a man from Switzerland. What made it so bad was that I had just finished telling a group of eight on an eight passenger boat just how dangerous alligators could be. And I had lied a little. Well, this little dude heard the lecture and believed it. I was feeding baby gators on my right when he entered on my left, landing right in the lap of a man from Switzerland, who said something in Swiss that I'd really like to have understood. I think the gator understood. He sure lost his nerve in a hurry. Of course, eight people screaming for help and hunting for an exit sign might have had something to do with it. I assured them from my seat, three feet above theirs, that the gator running back and forth across the boat did not really want them. They did not believe me, of course. Anyway, I had to climb down, catch him, and return him to the water. I threw the little sucker about ten yards, which made him mad, and three years later he's still mad about that. Just tap the side of the boat and he'll take a shot at your fingers. He is now about three and a half feet and still growing. Lots of real entertaining things happened at Nancy's Nest, but it was always Stumpy that brought emotion. This little guy made you glad you came, glad you were alive, and most of all, glad he was alive. Nancy was old, so the predators of baby gators ran rampant. Each and every one of Stumpy's brothers and sisters pushed him around, but he somehow didn't seem to mind. Stumpy just kept hanging on. Maybe he was hoping to survive. I was hoping he would make it for sure, and hundreds of tourists were too. Y'all are going to have to stay tuned for chapter three, because my camera, my little go cam, will not keep the battery up. That it takes to do chapter three but this is i gotta say this is a very touching story i have not read it without you guys before this point and uh i'm not going to read it without you guys because it's something that's important to me because it's from my homeland i know you guys have been wanting me to do a story about my life and my past and everything i'm going to eventually um i did come up with a video of uh my snakes from when I was 19 years old when I still had teeth before they got beat out of my head um, you can see I looked like a shark because I had a rifle stock just sitting there beating my beating my teeth out from a home invasion but that's another story that I'm not going to go into but uh, Stumpy's Tell people this will uh, that's, that's a pretty good story it makes, makes you want to survive and makes you want to hope for better and the worst of times we are going to be on chapter 3 next, and it is called a sad day. So, uh, I hope it's not a sad day because Stumpy dies. Um, I wish I could find out where all these books was, so I could, uh, I'd be able to send all my most hardcore fans a copy, but I don't, um, I can't ask around some of the locals and stuff and see if they ever come across any more copies, but I don't know. It's just narrowed down. It's funny that it's narrowed down to this one little piece in Alabama where uh, where uh, this guy came from the Everglades and worked in the Everglades. And then it just so happened that I come across it. It's almost like it was meant to be, you know. It was meant to be. Let me show you all these tarantulas real quick one more time. Everything's going good. I'm going to end up uploading these two videos because I don't have the room on this little bitty card to be able to 
keep putting videos up here because I got some other videos on here I also need to upload for you guys. But uh, I do definitely want y'all to stay tuned for this. Um, chapter 3. I think there's only two more chapters. Let me see real quick. Yeah, we're on 3, we got 4, 5, and then the epilogue, which is 6. And I'll read it with the last, uh, I'll read it along with the last one. So it's going to be a five part five part story guys I really hope you guys enjoyed and uh, like always peace love and happiness and all that good shit like subscribe to